Hey guys, welcome to the third part of chapter 7, which is on um, momentum and impulse. So, momentum just again being uh, mass times velocity. I'm just going to write that up there just for reference. And um, impulse being a force that changes. Um, a force that changes momentum. We do have the uh, we do have equa an equation for impulse, which looks like this: impulse is equal to force times delta t, which means change in time. Just going to keep those up there for reference while we talk about collisions. Okay, so collisions I think are really cool because they're they're another one of those things that you can really see in everyday life. You really can apply this. So. Basically, there are two types of collisions. There are, um, I'm going to just gonna put two subcategories, elastic, elastic, and inelastic, inelastic. So it's pretty interesting. And one thing you need to know about both of them, um, they both abide by conservation of momentum, okay? So they both abide by the con law of conservation of momentum, which is very important. But they do differ in some ways. For example, um, elast so in elastic collisions, um, when two things collide, like two balls, two billiard balls like this, collide, okay, there then, uh, they, let's, we assume they have the same mass, okay, they then will uh, bounce off of each other, they will collide and bounce off of each other, and move at the same initial speed because they have the same mass here they'll move at the same initial speed and that's called an elastic collision because no heat was transferred transferred no heat transfer and no uh, deformation deformation so for example none of the balls were like cracked or broken and there was no heat transfer this is called um, this is called an elastic collision. And um, we see that with um, the conservation of momentum over here, this plays in because um, I'm going to say, uh, let's see, mv before b must equal mv after. And notice, and make sure that you know that the mvs are net mv, so the, M, the and mv being momentum up here, guys, just know that. Um, so net momentum. Net momentum before the collision must equal net momentum after the collision. So let's say this had a momentum of 4 meters per second. I'm just going to write 4, no. And then this had a momentum of 4. So then that, the net momentum before would be 8. And that must equal the net momentum after. So the net momentum after must have been 8. So this must have been going 4. This must have been going 4 because they have equal masses. But now if we talk about inelastic collisions, it's a little more, it's a little, it's a little not as intuitive. Um, so inelastic, there is a heat transfer, heat transfer, or a deformation of the objects, deformation, let me see what else they say, um, yeah, generate heat, deformation, tangled or coupled together. So if two objects collide like they give here, the two trains, if they collide with each other, right? Let's say this is going at four, this is at zero, and they hit, and then they latch onto each other, that's an inelastic collision because now you can consider this a deformity, right? Because they're um, they're now kind of just, they're they're together and they're a different shape than they were before. Because they're two, they're not, two separate entities combined to one. So we can also look at the net. The mv before must equal the mv after, and this is net again. So we have net mv before must be four, right? It has to be four. But we're talking acceleration here. So this four is the acceleration. So we have mass times four times four right, for the first one, plus mass times zero must equal, right, must equal, and this is all before, sub b, um, must equal 
2 times the mass times just uh, V after, right? Sorry, this is a little cramped in here, but why does this make sense? Well, let's look at it. So this is a 4, sorry about that. So we, we have the acceleration of the two trains. We have, this is a 4, this, I'll put A's here. This is a 4 acceleration meters per second squared, and this is 0 meters per second squared, okay? Um, sorry, I don't know why I'm saying acceleration. I'm very sorry. It's velocity. Please don't listen to what I was saying before. Velocity. Velocity, okay? Velocity, because mass times velocity, right? So we have 4 velocity units here and 0 velocity units here. So we know the equation for momentum is mass times velocity. We don't know the mass here. So we're just going to call it m, and we know that these two have the same mass, okay? We know that these two have the same mass, so we can say it m, because it's just a constant. So mass times 4, mass times velocity, right? They correspond. Plus, because in this sense, this is net. Net. Everything on this side of the equation, which is all this stuff, has to be all net before. So that means we add the two together. So mass times 4 plus mass times 0, because this guy is mass, but times 0. Must equal 2 times the mass times whatever the velocity after is. That's what we're trying to find, the velocity after. We're trying to find this guy. And why, why 2 times the mass? Well, they have the same mass, and when they're coupled together here, it's 2m. So really, we could just do some algebra here. We have 4m equals 2mv, right? So that means that v equals 2, okay? So um, the velocity after of this whole unit here, this whole separate, this when they're coupled together, they're then going two velocity units, or two meters per second, meters per second. So you can just do algebra to figure that out. I think that is very interesting. Um, so I guess we could do one more um, collision problem. I'll clear it, and we'll have a lot more free space to work with. Okay, let's do another collision problem. Let's say um, I'm going to be creative here and use the trains again. Because I like trains and I don't know anything else that couples together very easily. Um, let's say, I don't know how well are my numbers are going to work out, but let's say this is moving at 5 meters per second and this is moving at 3 meters per second. And then after, this is like scene 1, then it's scene 2 when they collide. Since this guy's inevitably going to catch up to this guy, right? Because he's moving a little faster. When they do collide, so show a little connection point there. They're moving again. Remember, this is an in inelastic because there's now a deformity. Inelastic. Now they're going to be moving at what what speed? What velocity? We're trying to find out the velocity. So we don't know the masses, but we can we can infer that they're the same. We they are the same. So we have mass. V before net, let me put net, I haven't been putting net, equals net MV after. So we have um, M times 5 plus M times 3 equals 2M, 2M times V after, right? So now we have... Um, Simply 3m plus 5m, 8m equals 2m times VA, and then we have VA equals, just divide the 2 out, divide the 2 out, and the m's cancel out, VA equals 4 meters per second. So after, this is this whole unit together is now moving 4 meters per second as a velocity. So that's very cool, and um, I'll see you guys in the, the final part of... Chapter 7, which would be on momentum vectors.